Securities offered through T.J. Stearns, a registered representative of Crown Capital Securities LP, member FINRA SIPC. Content is intended to provide accurate information, however, is not intended as financial, tax, or legal advice. Please consult a financial, legal, or tax professional for specific information regarding your individual situation. Opinions expressed and provided are for general informational purposes only and should not be considered a solicitation for the purchase or sale of any security. Welcome to Protect and Grow with Chicagoland Certified Financial Planner Tim Stearns of TJ Stearns Incorporated. Trust, respect, and results. TJ Stearns Incorporated focuses on comprehensive financial planning and benefits. And welcome into the program. This is Protect and Grow Chicagoland Retirement with Chicagoland's resource for guidance about your money. Certified financial planning professional, Tim Stearns, CFP, president and founder of TJ Stearns, Inc., Tim, we appreciate the time and the information and, and perspective that you provide on our money here on Protect and Grow each and every week. It is a difficult time to be an investor. I would agree with that, Peter. It's, uh, we've had a lot of uh, upheaval uh, over uh, overseas, uh, even here with the Fed, inflation, all those things being related. Uh, you know, it's, it's really taken its toll on some portfolios that we've been seeing lately. Yeah, I'm reading headlines from Barron's, uh, retirees rattled from uh, Financial Advisor Magazine, uh, mom and pop investors took a billion dollar bath, uh, boomers waking up to economic uncertainty. Just it seems like we are very concerned about the volatility of the market right now. Tim, what's your take and perspective on it? Well, I mean, we, we've talked about this before, but uh, you know, I had a professor in college that would talk about how bull markets die on euphoria, right? And at the end of 2021, no one thought the, print, uh, the printing press of money that we were making in the market would stop, right? So we were euphoric. Well, now we're looking at it and, and there's almost an element of fear. I don't think we're to desperation yet. Like we're, we were in like 2008 or the early 2000s. But at the end of the day, people are starting to realize that, you know, all this printing, of money that the Fed has done is creating inflation. So now what does the Fed do? They come in they and they raise rates to slow that process of inflation. By doing so though, they're hurting, for example, tech companies that usually borrow money to do all their research and development, R&D. Well, that's gonna hurt the, the bottom line of companies that are, are tech companies, Apple, Amazon, those types of companies. So you're seeing it come home to roost like we've been talking about for for years on this show that be careful what you wish for. You know, if you're all in on the stock market, you're going to get hurt at some point. And if you're a baby boomer, like the classes that I teach that most of the people that attend our classes are, are all about, you know, realizing that they're coming down to an end of their careers and that what they have on that last day in the job is what they're going to have forever. Right. So they're going to be a net seller of assets. Well, that's one thing. They're using the money, right, to live on. But now the market has taken off three, 13% of their portfolio in the S&P 500 and about 18% of the NASDAQ. So now what? You know, And they have to take money from there? It's a double whammy. Well, if you have questions or concerns about your money, that's why you've got the resource of a certified financial planning professional, Tim Stearns, CFP and proactive Savers and investors across Chicagoland have turned to that help and guidance for individual planning direction, and you can as well. You've got the ability to have a conversation, ask a few questions, talk about your worries and concerns with your money if you have those, or just problem solve your planning. Make sure that there are no stones unturned or issues potential issues into the future that have been left unaddressed. And you can get a better understanding and education about your money, how much risk you are taking, the fees that you are paying, the taxes that you may be liable for, how you can control all of those things by having that conversation for a complimentary, no cost, no obligation, review and strategy session. All you need to do is pick up the phone and give TJ Stearns Inc. and Tim Stern, CFP, a call, 800-640-2256. That's 800-640-2256, 800-640-2256. Tim, since about 2008, the Fed has been taking a stance of quantitative easing. Now, what this meant was essentially make money plentiful and easy and cheap 
to access. Now they have turned a big corner and they are taking a stance of quantitative tightening, which is restrict the supply of money and make it more expensive to access. Uh, uh, Summing up what you just said there. Now, the market kind of hates change doesn't really like uncertainty or changes in direction. And we are seeing a big change in direction, which is one of the leading causes of this volatility. Um, No one knows the future of the market, but I just don't see this correcting and changing course and going back positive in the very, very near future with the Fed saying they are continuing to raise interest rates over the next year to 18 months. Well, they are trying to get inflation under control, which I likened this the other night at our class to, you know, the horses are, are out of the barn and we're shutting the door finally, right? So this is something that they're, they're to me, they've been kind of slow active on it. And what that's doing is it's finally kind of curtailing a little bit of inflation, but at the end of the day, that's going to hurt. I, and I like so, that, slow active, not proactive. <laughs> no, exactly. And that, And really, truly, I mean, at the end of the day, they're being reactive to what's going on, you know? And I wonder kind of where their heads are at with stuff like that. Um, You know, um, they had all this free money stimulus going out there. And, uh, you know, as you know, Harry Dent, the world famous uh, Harvard economist, said it was much like, uh, you know, giving free drugs to a druggie. And then at some point they're going to a drug addict. They're going to shut it off and then they're going to go through withdrawals. I think that's kind of where we're at now. You're looking at 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 money tightening up. And now what, you know, you got to figure out how to get things done. Yeah. All, all that money, so to speak, has kept the party going on wall street, but uh, when it sort of slows down or shuts off very much akin to as, as uh, Harry Dent put it on this program uh, several years ago, an addict experiencing or going through withdrawals. That's uh, a little bit what we're seeing here. Now the old saying, Tim, is that you haven't lost money unless you sell, but, isn't, isn't the opposite of that true? And, and, and kind of two analogies here. If we look at home values, a lot of people have that same kind of euphoria that their home has appreciated in value so much. But if the tide turns and values begin to recede, did they actually make any money? No, not unless they sold. Or like right. at a casino, if uh, you go in with $1,000, you win your first hand, now it's up to 1500 but then you keep playing and you get back down to your thousand or even less. Did you really have any money? And that's sort of what we're seeing in the market is a lot of people did have that euphoria when markets were at highs, but did we really make any money unless we sold and took profits at that time? Unfortunately, you're correct because people are, you know, they're the attitudes that we saw in my classes or people coming into the office or that, you know, this, this party is never going to end. And we would tell people, you need to be careful. You know, you should have some uncorrelated assets, you know, whether that's an annuity, cash, something else, uh, life insurance policies, what, what have you, that are not correlated to the stock market's whims. And now they're, you know, they're calling our office left and right saying, hey, we need to get back together and figure this out because I should have listened the first time. Uh, the other thing I'm finding is that a lot of these people that are on TV, Uh, different companies that are touting how well they've done. Uh, You know, we're seeing lack of activity while the market is going haywire inside these people's uh, accounts. Um, One gentleman had, um, he was told by a uh, money manager that's on TV all the time that uh, his account, which was worth 1.6 million is now down to 1.3. It'll go down to 1.1. And hopefully by the end of this year, it'll be back up to 1.6. So we went and looked at how many trades he had done in March and April when the market was completely hemorrhaging. And there was two trades for $10,000, mm-hmm. one buy, one sell. So someone is not watching the, the store, as they say. You know, It's just a buy and hold, and that does not work in this market. We've talked about this. You need to be active, dynamic, and strategic in these markets to chart these waters. Well, Tim, you always send over some great information in preparation for each show. Uh, According to Bank of America, you you provided me information. There have been 19 bear markets in 140 years. By the way, a bear market defined textbook definition as a loss of 20% or more 
in the stock market indices. The average bear market duration, according to this uh, Bank of America uh, article, 289 days. Now, that's not the recovery to get back. That is just the period where the market is declining. So almost a full year, kind of a slow bleed. And the average decline is not that 20% textbook definition of the threshold. The average decline is a negative 37.3% loss, Uh, a pretty substantial amount of of loss there and a pretty substantial amount of time. Now, uh, to put those massive outside gains that we've seen over the last 12 years in perspective, another 10% decline from here would only take us back to the level the markets were at in about October of 2020. A 20% fall would put us roughly to June of 2020. A 30% plummet from today's levels would get us back to about April of 2020. And a 40% free fall in indices values would only wipe out the gain made since early 2019. So the the index could actually be cut in half from here and we would only be back in about 2018 territory to put that in perspective. Do we have more room to fall is my question when when I read what you put together there. Right. Well, it's totally true that that we do have more room to fall. And that's why, you know, if people are using asset allocation, which again, over the last 22 years has failed us, all right, five different times. If they're using that, they, sh- you know, shame on them to not learn from their lessons. Go see an advisor that's actually going to be active, strategic, and, and dynamic with your portfolio that will actually go off to the sidelines while the market is hemorrhaging like you just spoke of. I don't understand the buy and hold mentality nowadays when, you know, we always talk about in class that for your grandfather, that worked, you know, up until 1999, you know, it was just a nice uh, sloped curve up to the right. And now we have it being a W, you know, up, down, up, down. And that's what we've had the last 22 years. So it's the new market that we're dealing with, but it's not new. We've been doing this for 22 years. So we need to change. And, you know, what is the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. Well, there you go. Yeah, I heard a lot of people in 2000 and 2008, if the market comes back, I'm going to get out or do something yes. different. And, and, right. and yet here we are again with many right. uh, still still taking that same approach. But ladies and gentlemen, if you would like to find out and benefit from those 22 years of experience in taking some alternative looks at how to utilize the market, where and when it is an appropriate tool, and then how to put in some safeguards against catastrophic losses, pick up the phone and give Tim Stern CFP a call there at TJ Stearns, Inc., 800-640-2256, 800-640-2256, an additional offering for education. You can attend one of the retirement rescue classes that Tim frequently holds throughout the Chicagoland area. Again, to find out when the next one is and, and how you can attend, give a call, 800-640-2256, 800-640-2256. So Tim, you, you sent along another resource here, this interesting chart. And before we get into the chart, because numbers can be Uh, a a little difficult over the radio. Um, If, ladies and gentlemen, you would like to see this chart for yourself so you can review what it's saying, again, give that number a call, 800-640-2256. Or if you're uh, listening on the podcast or viewing the video version of today's program, we'll try to put a link in the show notes for this chart. But uh, the chart, Tim, basically gives us nine different scenarios. It is a matrix. There are three different potential directions that the market could go. It could be heading up, it could be going sideways, or it could be heading down. And then three different scenarios for what we are doing with our money. We're either contributing, holding, or distributing, taking income. So money's either going in, it's sitting, or it's coming out. And What this chart shows us using real world returns of the S&P 500 is the difference that it makes based on what we are doing simultaneously compounded by what direction the market is going. And I guess I inherently kind of knew this, but seeing these numbers is really remarkable. It it is very interesting to see what happens if, if you're distributing in a down market, you know, if, if you're in a, in an up market, you know, that's, it's, it, it's a good thing, right? I mean, we have sequence of returns, right? 
Uh, there's risk to that, though. If the market's going down like we've been dealing with this whole year, then you, you, you're you a net seller of assets, and now you're still taking money out when, when your portfolio is down. This chart shows you and exemplifies exactly what can happen to your portfolio. Well, so for example, in the chart, Tim, a yep. down market, the first three years of the 2000s, 2000, 2001, 2002. And yep. where, where I found this interesting is we compared on this chart, if you started from scratch, if you had no money and you were investing $10,000 per year over that down period, the total loss cumulative of that three-year period was a negative 46.55%. However, you didn't lose nearly as much if you were starting from scratch and just adding $10,000 a year to the market. Yes, you had less money than you had put in, but you put in about 30,000 and you had about 20,000 left after the market had lost nearly 46, nearly 47, 46 and a half percent. On the other hand, if we had started that period with $100,000, all we had left at the end of that three years was about $59,000. So we lost substantial amounts of money over that period of time. Whereas if money's moving in, if we're contributing, we're taking advantage of the losses, so to speak, and dollar cost averaging, which is one of the fundamental principles of long-term financial success, but it doesn't work with the existing life savings that we had already built up prior to a downturn. It only works on the new contributions. Right. And, and you know, and what's going on in retirement? You're not contributing anymore. You're not working. You're not having a 401k uh, contribution from yourself, plus the uh, your company matching you. These are things that, you know, the sequence of returns risk, which I, 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 I'm very surprised you know, we, we teach these classes in Florida, Arizona, and Chicagoland, right? And we, I'm really surprised that I'd say about 95% of the population out there doesn't know what sequence of returns risk is. It's really simple. If the market's going up and you're taking money out, you're going to probably be okay in retirement. The market's going down like this chart is showing, then you're going to have a problem, you know, that you might have to not do that trip that you want to do. You might have to, you know, not buy that car. You might have to buckle down a little bit. Um, so we make sure that we try to get people an income allocation plan that you're not having to draw off that money. You have an income set up so that when the market is down and your portfolio is down, you're not, you know, a double-edged sword where you're taking money out too, and then really hurting yourself. Yep. And scenario number two, a sideways market. So we've probably by now all heard the terminology, the lost decade. It was basically yeah. the first 12 years, really, of the 2000s, where the market started January 1st of the year 2000 uh, at 13, 1469 and did right. not cross that threshold and stay above it until January of 2013. And so, Tim, if we were contributing $10,000 a year during that time, uh, we actually would have ended over that, that 11 year period from 2000 through the end of 2010, we would have built up $117,000. Whereas if we had started that decade with $100,000, we would only have $85,000 of that 100,000 left. And again, I know numbers over the radio, a bit confusing, but if you wanna see the charts, ladies and gentlemen, or if you want to talk with him about opportunities to differentiate the approach that you're taking with your existing life savings and retirement dollars versus the ongoing contributions or the income that you need to create, you need to pick up the phone and give a call 800-640-2256. That's 800-640-2256. But Tim, that is the key with the existing life savings that we have versus the ongoing contributions or the need for income. There is a different approach that we should be taking. Right. I mean, when you're accumulating, you can take more risks, right? We've talked about this when we're younger because we're still adding to the pot. But in distribution, your investment strategy should be very different, right? It needs to be a little bit safer. But, you know, it's a double, it's a double whammy if you have to also keep up with this inflation that's absolutely crazy right now. So, <clears throat> sorry, three, two, one. If you have to keep up with inflation. Right. And the only way you can do that is in equities. So how much risk do you take? How much risk do you have right now? 
the pit of your stomach is saying, oh my gosh, I didn't realize how much at risk I was taking. We have so many people that come into the office and they say, well, I meant to have stuff, uh, my, my portfolio in bonds, but it turns out, you know, the, the stocks went on a run and the bonds kind of shrank last year. And now I've got this huge stock portfolio with a hole in it because the market's been bad. Well, an income allocation plan, it's never too late to do that, right? To make more with less. And that's why we tell people, give us a call. First 10 callers, I'll be happy to get the book, Income Allocation, uh, from my buddy David Gaylor into their hands. The book makes sure that it, it, it gets across the idea that even in a down market, you're going to be okay because you have a plan. Uh, one of the things we talked about the other night with a couple is they didn't have a plan. I said, yeah, you kind of do. You Not having a plan does have a plan, right? And meaning that they don't know what they're going to do, which way is up. So you map out exactly how you're going to build your retirement and make sure that you're uh, taking into effect Social Security, do an optimization report, you know, all these things that are your guaranteed money, make sure that you're accounting for how you're going to take out your distributions in that, as well as your own personal portfolio. Again, if you would like that book, Income Allocation, this is a resource being used by advisors and by investors across the country who want a better understanding of the risks that we face in modern financial and retirement planning and the specific strategies for how to address those risks that, that are only compounded in retirement when we are counting on our dollars to be there and to produce for us an income. And the final column of this chart is, is about those distributions, but the book Income Allocation is really going to go a long way. So if you would like that book or if you'd like to speak with Certified Financial Planning Professional, Tim Stearns, CFP, about your specific situation, your plan, and how to make sure every dollar is working its hardest. Pick up the phone and give you uh, give a call, 800-640-2256, 800-640-2256, 800-640-2256. And in this final column, Tim, it's it's interesting. The last decade has been fantastic. I mean, the, the 2009 through the end of 2021, the S&P was up a cumulative total of 172 0.25%. Fantastic. But in this final column where we're taking distributions at a 4% initial cash flow rate from a, a starting right. value, we never even get back above water from what we had at the start of the year 2000. The, the account balance essentially floats, actually fluctuates a little bit. But um, taking distributions, especially during those first few down years, catastrophic. And that's what income allocation and sequence of returns specifically addresses the potential, the possibility of down years in the market and then how to survive them as a retiree. So again, if you'd like that book, pick up the phone, give Tim Stern, CFP a call, 800-640-2256, 800-640-2256. But Tim, we, we talked about the ability to differentiate our approach based on what we're doing with our money. Essentially, this is you've called it the bucket strategy, right? Mm -hmm. But it is time optimizing different dollars for their specific utilization into the future, otherwise known as income allocation or a bucket strategy. People who are 59 and a half or above need to take special notice because they've got that ability to differentiate dollars. It's a fantastic opportunity that I really don't hear talked about much. Well, the 59 and a half loophole is what I, we like to call it. It's called an in-service distribution. So let's say I work for XYZ company and I have a million dollars in there. I can take my money out of that 401k because I'm over 59 and a half and move it into something that I can self-direct that maybe could have stop losses on it versus a mutual fund that I just got hit in the market from does not have. The deferral that I put in per year with this company would stay the same. The match that they're giving me would stay the same. There would be no taxes because we're moving it into an IRA. So it's the best of both worlds. You have control of your future. You're not going to be taxed on it. You're still going to be uh, maintaining a spot in your in your deferral program at your company. But now you kind of you can you know drive your own car. You know, be the captain of your ship. Whatever the analogy you want to use, that's huge. And a lot of people don't know about it. Uh, we had a woman in class the other night who's HR lady, uh, you know, she worked and she couldn't believe it. She's like, oh, you know, I've heard about that. 
And, you know, guess what she's about to do? She's going to do an in-service distribution because she said, my mutual funds are getting killed daily. I'm down 17% for the year. She's 65 years old. She's no reason she should be in these mutual funds that are just bumping along in the middle of the night without knowing what they're really doing. So ladies and gentlemen, if you are 59 and a half or above, and you would like to understand how to differentiate different segments of your money based on what you're doing with those dollars, the existing life savings that you have built up to this point, you can take control over and decide how much market risk and exposure you want with those dollars. The ongoing contributions, you can continue to take advantage of the 401k and the match while you're still working for the same company. Uh, it's a great opportunity. It's, it's a basic foundation of sound planning is understanding what your money is doing for you and make it work toward that specific goal. That's what the in-service distribution is all about, controlling risk. Pick up the phone, give Tim Stearns a call. It's maybe not something that's difficult to do, but you don't want to make any mistakes or missteps while you're doing it that would cost you unnecessarily. So get the help of a CFP planning, certified financial planning professional. Tim Stearns is there, Azure Resource Chicago Land. 800-640-2256. That's 800-640-2256. And Tim, not only the in-service distribution for those still working for a company and contributing, but also those older 401ks left behind, another area where we need to really differentiate and, and pay attention to what's going on with our money, not just ride out the market. Yeah. Open up your world to all the investments that are out there. You don't have to be beholden to what your old 401k uh, had as a lineup or your current one, if you're over 59 and a half. And I like the fact that uh, neither of these moves, Tim, is going to end up costing us any immediate taxes. <laughs> nope, exactly. No one likes taxes, and nor do we. <laughs> and you don't want to take unnecessary risk with your hard-earned life savings. You don't want to pay un necessary taxes. You don't want to overpay in, in fees or penalties. So just make sure that you're doing this the right way. That's why you've got the resource of a certified financial planning professional, Tim Stern CFP. And he also makes great additional educational uh, opportunities available. The book, Income Allocation for the First 10 Callers, if you've got 500000 saved for retirement, you want to do the right things with that money. And income allocation will help you better understand what steps to take to make it work for you into the future and the retirement rescue classes. Again, educational opportunities uh, from a certified financial planning professional, Tim Stern, CFP. Just call now to take advantage of any of those, as well as the individual complimentary review and retirement planning strategy session, a forensic financial analysis, and then a detailed mapping out of the blueprint of how to achieve your goals into the future. 800-640-2256. That's 800-640-2256. 800-640-2256. 800-640-2256. Tim, always appreciate uh, your perspective and guidance here on the program, bringing uh, a, a little light to what we are looking at in the market and, and making sure that the Chicagoland area savers and investors uh, have the information to make well thought through and informed decisions with their money. Peter, thanks for having me. We'll see you next week. Tune into Chicagoland Certified Financial Planner Tim Stern's full radio program on 890 WLS every Sunday at 11 a.m. and visit tjsterns.com for many valuable resources, including other great episodes of Chicagoland Retirement. Be sure to subscribe. Securities offered through TJ Stearns, a registered representative of Crown Capital Securities LP, member FINRA SIPC. The information presented on this program is provided for informational purposes only without warranty of accuracy, completeness, or suitability for a particular purpose. This program is not intended to be and does not constitute financial investment, legal, or tax advice. This information is general in nature, not specific enough to be construed as advice. You should not make any decision based on the information presented on this program without independent consultation with an appropriately licensed professional or competent advisor. Investment and security or the market involves a potential risk for loss of principal. Trading, therefore, may not be suitable for all listeners. Annuity guarantees are based solely on the financial strength and claims-paying ability of the issuing company. Withdrawals of growth from annuities may be taxable as ordinary income in the year it is taken. Individuals should review contracts for specific details of the product's features and costs.